Welcome to everyone to another edition of Ask the Millionaire. My name is Mark Kramer and I am thrilled to be talking to you all today. Today we have a question from Ricardo Delgado. Ricardo writes, how does a business analyze where they can start improving and scaling? In simpler terms, how does a $100,000 business differ from a million dollar business? What mindset and traits are involved? I operate a barber shop and I'm a barber as well. How can I start analyzing where to start making more revenue and take, take action away? Ricardo, I once worked uh, with a hairdresser that also wanted to scale and was about a similar size to you. And what we did was we uh, made, create a spreadsheet about all the hours that she could possibly fill and what and how many chairs that it would take uh, to pay the existing uh, studio and then expand to another studio and what kind and another uh, shop and where could we go and do that shop. So once we got to where we had three people in that were basically uh, cutting hair between 30 and 40 hours a week, we realized that then we could go and move on. But we did it all using a spreadsheet and we also took a look at different locations that wouldn't cannibalize our existing location and ones where we had customers that could uh, put out a good word for us in those communities that we were serving. So we really leveraged the customers a lot to go and put on Facebook and Instagram, showing their haircuts uh, on Facebook and Instagram and putting that out there. So that was extremely helpful. So yes, if you can go and put together a plan, figure out how many people that you need to cover uh, your cost in your store and make a reasonable profit, then you can go and build this up and always picking locations where it's not that far from you to uh, manage, but far enough away that your customer base isn't going to be diluted uh, and going to other locations and one where there's a need actually for someone of your skill set to be there. Our next question comes from Yolande, and I'm, I'm going to really butcher this name, uh, Dia Gavaria. Uh, Yolande writes, what are creative ways on a limited budget to hire and compensate a salesperson? Where would you recommend finding that person? I need to employ a salesperson. What is the best way to pay them? Commission only, hourly with small commissions, or simply hourly with no commission. If commission based, then what percentage of the sale is acceptable or standard practice? We're a pillow manufacturer making decorative pillows and manufacturing pillow inserts. Our elevator pitches, we're, we're a mother daughter team that designs and creates custom decorative throw pillows for home and business branding. So if you're a, a pillow manufacturer and you're selling to Target or you're selling to Walmart or, uh, or Bed Bath & Beyond or other chains that would sell it, you're not selling direct to the consumer, then you're gonna need to pay a combination of salary and uh, a commission and not straight commission. Why not straight commission is because those sales really take a long time. And so that person could get a draw against commission but essentially it's gonna take a long time and you're not gonna get somebody of quality and has that kind of discipline that will stay with it uh, for a long period of time. So it's really critical uh, that you set aside money to pay this person. Now, finding this person, best to go and use your personal network and email all your friends, relatives, everybody on Facebook, on LinkedIn, letting them know for the kind of person that you're looking for, but telling them you're looking for someone who can handle long-term sales because they're not gonna walk in and somebody's saying, oh great, we're gonna buy you know 1,000 pillowcases. That's just not gonna happen because they're gonna have to fit it into their budget. They're gonna have to find the shelf space. A whole bunch of stuff is gonna go into it, the negotiation with your group. You're probably always at minimum three months if they like were crazy about it and needed it, but probably six months to a year away. So it's gonna take uh, a long time. And you yourself know, being a pillow manufacturer, probably how long it's taking you to get into if you're into big box stores. So I would have some kind of ba um, base 
and maybe it's like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. And then on top of that, I would have some kind of commission because you want to incentivize them to get as much business as they can. And let's face it, a base of fifty, sixty thousand isn't really much today. So that's what you'd have to go and do. And I would find somebody who may even have connections in the field that can already open doors for you. You might also advertise with your customer base to find out anybody who actually uses your product and can swear by it, and loves it, and is passionate about it, that they could work for you as well. The next question is from Kimberly Benjamin. Kimberly writes, can you sell an idea on how to make an existing product better? I sell life insurance when I'm slow at the salon and we have an app that we use and I feel like there's always a way to improve the app to help customer experience. I wanted to know how do you pitch an idea and sell it at the same time? If you want to pitch this idea to that company, what steps would you take? So uh, thank you very much, Kimberly. The, the fact is you would have to go and create a first demo of this and there's plenty of places that you could go to to develop an inexpensive app demo to show people that this is what they'd be getting. You probably can get an actual first version that can go live because today somebody's not gonna go and buy from you just with the idea or with a PowerPoint. They would have to need it, have to see it, test it, make sure it works. So you're probably gonna have to spend some money to get that first version. But look online, there are plenty of places that will allow you to make uh, that first generation MVP, minimal viable product, uh, without having to spend significant money so you can test whether this idea works or not. And you can also put on LinkedIn uh, and ask for app developers to send to you. You should put together a description of what you're looking for, all the different parts of it, and see what the cost could be out there. And you're gonna need somebody to work with you who really understands how to make those things work, where they easily work on both a laptop and uh, a mobile phone. Best of luck with that. Uh, I always love entrepreneurs, and I always love new ideas, or even ways to uh, improve existing ideas. The next is from David Manj, uh, or Manji. Uh, David writes, do you think 35 years old is too late to transition, uh, 35 year olds too late to transition careers? I'm a mortgage loan originator and due to rising interest rates, it's becoming difficult to close uh, three loans a month. I've decided to pick up a trade skill. I'm looking for, at construction, electrician, or commercial plumbing. Being that I'm 35 years old, not sure if I'm too late to get to a new trade. I've inquired about job openings in the trades and they all want a minimum of a year or more experience. I'm willing to take a pay cut to make, uh, become an apprentice. What are your thoughts? First of all, I think you're very smart to get out of the commercial um, loan business because you're right, the, rate, the interest rates are going up. A lot of people will actually be waiting to see if they go back down again, especially if there's a uh, new man or a woman in the White House that uh, comes from the Republican Party who typically would want to lower those interest rates, but we don't know that's going to be uh, the case. We don't know that that person's going to get in or that will make sense as we've seen in England when they tried to do the same thing and it almost destroyed their economy and they had the shortest lived prime minister. That all being said, never too late to transition uh, careers. I have uh, transitioned at least five times and I'm 61 years old. I've taught at colleges, I ran uh, different types of ventures, I've uh, worked as a uh, chief marketing officer, I've done a lot of different things. Today that's kind of expected and people will decide at any particular age, you know what, I think it's just a time, uh, time for me to change. I've had friends who were doctors who became lawyers or they became entrepreneurs. I've had lawyers who quit to become dog walkers. So again, don't limit your thinking. If you feel that there's something that you really like to do and like to wake up every day doing, like if, if you could do handyman work, there's no end to the amount of work a handyman can get. We see it all the time, I'm in Philadelphia and there's just not enough of them. And they can charge between 50 and 100 an hour and easily fill 40 hours a week 
probably as much as 60 hours a week. Same with people who learn how to do uh, electrician, plumbers, plumbers. My gosh, there's no end to it. So the bottom line is go pick thing, something that you think you can get excited about every day and that you are willing to work at it and work at it for a number of years and see if that works for you. And that's not what you need to do. Just take the chance on it. But 35, you're just a kid. The next question is from uh, Stella Nezjak. And I hope I pronounced that correctly and I apologize if I didn't. How do I communicate when talking to a new supplier in order to get a better deal? I own a small sportswear brand in Croatia and I'm looking to expand my product line. I'm sourcing manufacturers in uh, um, Alabeda and I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with Alabeda uh, or maybe she meant Albania and would like to learn how to convince them in working with me or taking me seriously. So if, if in fact you're already uh, selling product and every month the amount you're selling is going up, then you've got a good case for them that they can trust you and give you a better deal. I'm, I happen to be doing something like that with a current client already and his numbers are going up and he needs it from a cash flow perspective uh, in order to be able to fill all the business that he's getting, and of course, make a profit. So you have to find somebody who likes uh, your product, who really thinks it's cool, that they're excited about it. I would think that it might be best to go to uh, an, uh, any women who might be manufacturers and see how excited that they might get to help another woman entrepreneur to do it or that there are uh, women high level positions in the companies that you're talking to to see if they would get behind you as well. But if you could show them projections about what you could do if giving the right kind of support, and maybe if you found that you really like the supplier, maybe you say to them, look, uh, I can not only do that, I can not only give you more sales, but how about if I give you a percentage of the profit or how about if you become a shareholder in my business and that I uh, have you invest and maybe the trade is that you give me a lower price for a certain amount of stock so there's a lot of ways of uh, playing with this but that's what I would do if I were you is I would go to them show them that your sales are going up show them what you project your sales to go and be uh, get good publicity, you know, where you're at and wherever you're selling. Get newspapers and people online to talk about you so you can make this case. Look how excited people are about my product. I've won these awards. I've gotten this uh, press in newspapers and online publications. The more you can show that you're an up and comer, more people will get excited and the better chance you have of raising that capital. Well, I'm sorry I was a little late today. I hope all of you are having an amazing day and have an amazing weekend. And I look forward to seeing you next month. Everybody have a great, wonderful end of year. And um, we'll look forward to speaking to you and getting more of your questions. Have a great day.